Hey everybody, welcome to this presentation on Microsoft 2008 R2 CA and implementing an SSL certificate. And in this video, we've already bound the certificate to the website, so we're, we're past that, but we're still gonna work with the state licensing analogy to have it make sense. But I wanna focus on the under the hood kind of how things work. You know, what's actually going on when I make that connection finally to the website? How is the data being encrypted? And basically what's going to happen is you're going to get a copy of this certificate from the website. And this certificate is being brought down to your machine. And when you make this initial connection like this, what we're going to be doing is checking a few things. So we have this checklist down here of these things that we need to verify, right? So we bring the certificate down. And what we're going to do is, first of all, we're going to make sure that the, the name that we're typing in actually matches. So whenever you go to a website, you type in a name like www.coolweb.local. The first thing we check is that common name. We have to make sure that it matches. If it doesn't, we're going to get a message that's going to pop up and say, warning, there's some kind of a problem there. The next thing we're going to check is to see if the certificate has expired. We're also going to check to see if the root server, the enterprise root CA up here, the server that actually generated the certificate is somebody that we trust. So that's very important. So do I know who the root is? Do I know who issued that certificate to the CA? And I can verify that through the signature that I see on the certificate and the information that's embedded in the certificate itself. The last thing we check before we actually connect to the website is this, and this is really, really important. Has a certificate been revoked? And what we're going to do is go to the Active Directory LDAP path. Now we're assuming a lot of things here. This is all internal Active Directory base. And we're going to download this revocation list. And this list is a list of all the revoked certificates. If for some reason this private key had gotten compromised, for whatever reason, we could revoke this certificate. And that revocation would occur here at the issuer. So the analogy would be, if I have a doctor's office that was issued a license to operate, and we found out that the doctors in that office were not actually certified or didn't have their degrees, whatever they need to perform their, their medicine in that office, what the state might do is take away that office's ability to operate. They would revoke the license of that business. So the enterprise root CA plays the role of that agency. Now, when you walk into any business, it's really your responsibility to check that license on that business, go to the state's based site that has a list of all the valid businesses and check and see whether or not that license is really valid or not. Now in the computer world, it's a little bit different. Built into the certificate is a pointer to that location. In the physical world, we'd have to do a little bit of research and find out where to look to, to see the list of all the valid licenses or to check to see if a doctor's office license had been revoked. In the computer world, it's built in. Whenever you go to download that certificate, we're automatically going to go check and download this list of all the revoked certificates. So it's almost like better. It's like, can you imagine every single time you walk into a building, being able to like, I don't know, somehow automatically look at the, look at the license on the wall, go check the state list and see whether or not the license is good or not. I mean, that'd be fantastic, wouldn't it? We probably should do it more. You know, if I go to a doctor's office, I should probably be checking. Hey, or, you know, they got this license on the wall. Are they, is that license really good? I mean, I don't know. I don't know if that license is good if I don't actually go check it. So that's a really important uh, concept of what's going on. So all these things in this box down here, let me just put a box around this. All these things here are checked when we get that certificate brought down that very first time. Now, once the certificate is brought down, we're not going to be encrypting the data and I'm using the word not and I just want to emphasize that. We are not encrypting the data with the public key that's embedded in the certificate. So I'm going to write this down. The, the public key does not, I repeat, the public key does not encrypt the data. 
the public key encrypts the session key. The public key does not encrypt the data. The public key encrypts the session key. So what's going to happen once all these checks are done, built into the operating system, is if it's Vista 2008 and higher, it's the cryptographic next generation technology. If it's XP 2003 and older, it would be the built-in crypto APIs. So it's just a newer technology, supports some better encryption techniques, some new types of certificates, some different things that are done with the newer engine. So there's new features that come forward as the operating system changes and technologies change and rules change and all that good stuff. So what's going to happen is once all these checks in this box are done, this engine is going to generate a session key. So we're going to end up with a session key that is generated by this engine. Now what we want to do is ultimately, the ultimate goal is to encrypt the data with the session key. But to encrypt the data with the session key, what we have to do is get the session key on both sides. So the challenge or the trick is how do we get this session key from the workstation, have it traverse the wire, end up on the server so that anything that we generate here and encrypt with the session key can be decrypted on the server with the same key. So we're using what's called symmetric encryption, but how do we get this key over there? You know, what happens if a bad guy intercepts this key? Well, that's where the public key comes in. So what's going to happen is the public key that's embedded in that certificate is going to be used to encrypt this session key. So the public key is going to encrypt the session key while that session key lives on the machine. Let me just move this back over a little bit. So we're going to make a copy of the session key. The public key is going to encrypt the session key while it's on the machine. We're then going to send it across the wire. If a bad guy tried to get a hold of the session key and tries to crack it, he's not going to have a whole lot of luck because the public key is mathematically tied to the private key. The bad guy does not have the necessary private key to do that. So that's the question you basically ask. Does the bad guy have the private key? If the bad guy has the private key, if the key has been compromised somehow, then the bad guy indeed would be able to break that session key. And if he has the session key, since that's what we're going to be using for encryption, he'd be able to decrypt all the data. But it'd be very rare that he would. He'd have to have somehow broken into the server, somehow got a copy of the private key to be able to decrypt the session key. So the whole point of this process is it's virtually impossible without having the private key for the bad guy to figure out what the session key is made up of. Mathematically, it would take so many computations, it'd be almost impossible for him to determine what's in the session key. So we take the public key, we encrypt the session key with the public key that's embedded in the certificate. We send the session key across the wire. The bad guy can't do anything because he doesn't have the private key to decrypt the session key. And the session key lands up on our recipient, on the server that we want to send the data to. We're going to use the private key that's mathematically bound to the public key that originally encrypted this session key. And we're going to decrypt the session key using the private key that lives up on the recipient on the server that we're going to ultimately send the data to. So now I end up with the same key now lives on both sides. So I have the session key here 
and I have the session key here. So I have the same key on both sides. And now we just want to discuss the concept of symmetric and asymmetric just a little bit more. So symmetric by definition, symmetric means we're going to be using a single key. That means we have the same key on both the server and on the workstation, on the sender and on the recipient. It's a single key. It's the same key. It's one key. It's one key copy to both sides. It's the same key. It's referred to as symmetric and it's very, very fast. As a matter of fact, symmetric key encryption is 100 to 500 times faster using software. Depends on what you read. I've seen some different numbers on that. And up to a thousand times faster if you're using some kind of a hardware-based encryption as opposed to software-based encryption. If you compare that to asymmetric encryption, which is a key pair, now we're using asymmetric encryption to encrypt the session key by using a public and private key pair. But this session key encryption that we're going to be using is way, way faster than using a key pair. So symmetric encryption is much faster. Asymmetric requires a key pair. It's way slower than symmetric encryption. Uses a dual key pair. Uses to encrypt the symmetric key. So we're using, in this case, the asymmetric key pair to encrypt the symmetric key. The asymmetric key pair does not encrypt the data. The public key does not encrypt the data. The public key encrypts the session key and then the session key encrypts the data. So what's going to happen next is we're going to send some data. So from the sender, from the workstation, we're going to generate some data in a form like on a web page for credit card, whether it's PayPal or Amazon or whatever it might be. We're going to put some data into a form, credit card data, whatever your credit card number is. We're going to use the session key to encrypt that data. So the session key that was generated locally by the crypto engine is going to encrypt the data when we click submit. So I type the data in, I click submit, it's going to encrypt the data using the session key. The data gets traversed over the wire. Now the bad guy comes into play again. The only way the bad guy could ever decrypt this data is if he had the session key. He couldn't get the session key because he didn't have the private key to decrypt the session key. So the bad guy is out of luck. The data ends up on the server. Since we have the same key on both sides, this very fast session key, the session key that was copied over to the recipient is then going to be used to decrypt the data that goes on there. There's layers of, you know, first we decrypt the session key and then the session key decrypts the data. And then the data ultimately will end up up here in the data folder securely the way it's supposed to. And then the data is transmitted that way. Then when the session is over, that session key, that single key that we put on both sides will be gone. If I established a new session, I would get a brand new session key. This local engine would generate a completely unique key that would be used for the next session and so on and so forth. So, and these sessions don't last very long. So if the bad guy was trying to look into what's going on, because these sessions come and go so quickly, it's very difficult for that bad guy to really do anything with that. And that's the overall process. The only other thing that I think is real important is the concept of certificate revocation. Please check out my other video that goes through the revocation process to see how that works. And I'm going to show that uh, in a couple different scenarios. So you get to see that a couple times. I'm going to show it with the SSL. I'm also going to demonstrate revocation here on YouTube with the... Um, individual keys. And also if these videos end up on my website, you'll be able to find some more stuff up there. So definitely check it out. Thank you very much. That kind of wraps up that topic. I enjoyed covering the SSL stuff for you. It's really cool technology. We'll see you in the next video.